For almost two decades, this man has been on the front line training Muslim militants for war. From Pakistan to Afghanistan to the Philippines to here in Indonesia, Malaysian national Nasir Abbas has taught recruits to kill in the defence of Islam. As a top-ranking member of Jamar Islamia, or JI, he helped train hundreds of militants, including those responsible for the Bali bombings and other attacks across Indonesia. My specialise is weaponry, so I train people uh, to use the gun. To shoot? To shoot who? Yeah, uh, to shoot inside the battlefield against the armed troops, yeah, uh, which are attacking or uh, assault the, the, the camp. He designed this military-style academy in the Philippines jungle, where a Muslim insurgency has claimed tens of thousands of lives. The reward for dreaming it up was to be allowed to make it happen. There's a dormitory for the military academy student. There's a depot, yeah, weapons and ammunition. There's a dormitory for instructors, canteen, kitchen, yeah, short, short course student dormitory. There's a soccer field, there's a firing range. Yeah, so it's a complete training camp inside the jungle. Nasir Abbas shows me a similar camp where he was a trainer on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. So this is the location of military academy. Most of them was uh, Afghanis. There were a lot of Indonesians though. Yes. And those that you trained that were involved in the Bali bomb. Yes, like Ali Imran, Iman Samurra also was here. It was the devastating Bali bomb attack in 2002 that brought Jamar Islamia to the attention of the world. It was also what caused Nasir Abbas to turn against the organisation to which he had devoted decades of his life. He says his recruits misused both the knowledge he gave them and the true meaning of Islam by killing innocents. What they did in the Bali, that is not a battlefield. They are uh, killing uh, peoples. Well, I, I just say that it's not a battlefield. They're killing people. Yeah. His arrest in 2003, not long after the Bali bomb, was a major breakthrough for Indonesian authorities. He now walks free because he's helping police to track down other members of Jamaa Islamia. He agreed to meet with Dateline, but locations were carefully chosen. This valuable asset is closely guarded. Nasir Abbas knew and knows every single important leader in JI. Sydney Jones is the leading regional expert on Islamic militancy in Southeast Asia. He would have known every member of the Central Committee. He would have known everyone who was responsible for setting up and teaching in the military academies, both in Afghanistan and in the Philippines. Many of those behind the Bali bombings are now in jail. Three are about to face the death penalty. Nasir Abbas trained several of them. His own brother-in-law, Muklas, was the mastermind behind the first Bali bomb. Nasir Abbas says despite his senior role in Jamar Islamia as one of its four strategic commanders, he had no prior knowledge of the attack. But Muklas confirmed that the bombing was a JI operation. Jai culture is not to surrender them. So I just, I, I just only say to, them, to him that you are in danger, yeah? your family also in danger, so let your family with me and you go away anywhere that you like. In the months following the bombing, Nasir Abbas says he confronted senior JI leaders about the use of indiscriminate violence to achieve their goal that of a regional Islamic state under Sharia law. 
When the authorities came to arrest him, they came knowing his loyalty and conscience were split. How did police knew that I disagree with the bomb? How police knew that uh, I feel un uh, discomfortable with, with the leader of Abu Bakr Bashir? Yeah, and uh, uh, I think maybe uh, police got the information from the tennis from uh, who was been arrested earlier than me. Yeah, police uh, cannot make me uh, talk even even to to tell my name. Yeah, because I just hoping that they kill me. Yeah, but later then uh, I start to think again, think 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 many things that all of this happened. That is the God. That is because of the God will. I think it's it's true that he didn't have information that the Bali bomb or indeed some of the other bombings were being planned because all of that operational planning and decision making was done by a non-structural part of Jamaa Islamiya. <laughs> that followed his arrest, he realized he now had a chance for a new mission in life, and he began helping the police. A month after the second Bali bombing, the government scored another success. This video of a raid on the house of one of J.I.'s leaders was filmed by Indonesian police. Ada yang ngawat uh, ini pertama, kalian akan pecahin semua kan? Ya. Ada yang ngawasi, ya, ya kan? Ada yang lempar granat asap, ya. jangan masuk. Tunggu dulu setelah granat asap itu reaksinya bagaimana. Ya. Tapi itu kan step-stepnya perlu ada. Kalau ada perlawanan dari dalam, tembak. Police raided the hideout of Azahari bin Hussein, who's believed to have designed the bombs used in all of JI's big attacks in Indonesia. Azahari, who'd been trained in Afghanistan by Nasir Abbas, died in a hail of bullets as he attempted to hold off his attackers. Inside this house, police found a wealth of material, including Azahari's hands-on video demonstration. They also found four ready-made bombs and dozens more waiting to be assembled. Nasir Abbas was brought in to help identify documents and those involved. What I can say that I can identify, yeah, either identified personal, identified document, identified uh, word statement and everything, yeah. Sydney Jones says Indonesia has taken a high-risk approach in working with Nasir Abbas, but it's paying off. I think that the police get enormous credit for trusting Nasir Abbas to the point that he's been able to play the role that, that he has. I can't imagine anybody in Australia or the United States or Europe giving someone who was so senior in the movement so much freedom of movement to actually move around and, and help. Um, I think that He's not the only person who's been able to play this role, but I think the openness of the Indonesians in this regard deserves praise. After a year in jail, he's thankful it was Indonesian authorities who arrested him, and not the Malaysians nor the Americans. Otherwise, his reformation, or the role he's now playing, may never have happened. Maybe if I was got arrested by the American and they sent me to Guantanamo. So maybe the situation also different in Indonesia. Maybe. In how? How? What do you mean? That? What do you mean? Because, uh, uh, well, what, uh, because there is no nothing can. Uh, there is nothing function or nothing nothing benefit that they can get from me if they just only hold me. Uh, what you say? Uh, hold me inside a, a room yeah, without I can do something good for, for people. Released from prison, Nasir Abbas is allowed to both reside and travel freely in Indonesia. He's been shown a level of respect few other Muslim militants have been accorded.
He's been speaking out against his one-time comrades, urging them to rethink their position on jihad. I just want to stop uh, the crime. Yeah, because what they did, the operation, uh, the bomb operation, that is a crime. That is not jihad. So that's why I against the, the action. So it's the only way to stop that is to, to get them to be uh, arrested by the police and then they will stop. Because if they're not been arrested by the police, so they will think that what they did is right. Yeah. It makes you a traitor in their eyes, doesn't it? Yeah. Some of them had already called me as a traitor. And not only that, some of them uh, uh, claim that I was, I already be as an infidel. Nasir Abbas is also trying to reach out to other members of JI. And today he's meeting Salamat Wadodo, one of his former students. Wadodo, alias Pepin, alias Irwa, trained under him in Afghanistan. Ya, muslim di sana waktu itu kan diserang sama pasukan Rusia. Jadi kita istilahnya mempunyai suatu keharusan untuk membela umat Islam di sana. Wadodo was arrested shortly after the bombing of the Marriott Hotel in Jakarta. Nasir Abbas went to talk to him in the prison and convinced him to follow a new path. Bahwa jihad yang sebenarnya itu kan harusnya kan di medan perang. Gitu. Kali ini kan di medan yang damai, bagaimana dikatakan jihad kan dalam keadaan damai. Gitu. Jadi kami diberikan nasihat supaya tidak untuk mengebom. Nasir Abbas's routine now involves regular visits to prisons to see those convicted of terrorist offences. But his life continues to be lived on the edge. He knows he's considered a traitor by many, even within his own family. I'm facing my own friends. I'm facing people who knew me. Yeah, I'm facing people who, who was close to me before. Uh, and this is more difficult than you are facing to the people you do not know, uh, do not know them. Nasir Abbas would like to travel further afield to spread his message, but he can't travel outside Indonesia as the UN still lists him as a terrorist. For now, what he calls his new jihad is confined to Indonesia. Let us learn about Islam again. Yeah, it doesn't mean that our knowledge is enough yeah, to perform uh, what is it, Islam obligation, Muslim obligation. Uh, it it needs for us to learn again and to look back yeah, uh, for the origin uh, Islam teaching. So that's why we will know that uh, which way we are, in the true way or in the uh, wrong way.